Look how contaminated the soil is here. Wow, it's going up and up and up. You know, in the last year, we spent so much time together in the irradiated forests of Belarus over the border. We've met some of the people who continue to inhabit the irradiated villages there. But today, I'm here in the Ukraine because I want to visit the source of the tragedy itself. We're going to go together now with my guide, Igor, and we're going to see the reactor number four at Chernobyl power plant and also the abandoned town of Pripyat. Maybe we'll meet some people who continue to live there. So join me on the journey to Chernobyl. On the first border of the zone, they're kind of constructing it. Um, but I've got a list of rules that I mustn't do. I mustn't carry any kind of weapons and I mustn't drink liquors or take any drugs. Anyway, we've stopped off in what was a village before to see what was the kindergarten here. Let's take a look inside and see what's remaining of it. We can see in this room everything that was left, like the day on the, I suppose, when they were evacuated. Nothing's changed. The pillows are the children that lay in these cots. These are the nets, obviously, that stop the children falling off. Here are their toys, left untouched since the day. Wow. This really brings it home to you, doesn't it? When you see these kind of places, just what the tragedy was, the Chernobyl tragedy. Today we're going to visit some um, resettlers and so we've come here basically to buy some products in the shop here in the Chernobyl town so that we can give to them. Here it is, the old shop. See what they sell inside here. Dobry den. Мы хотим что-то купить для старики, которые живут в деревне. Хорошо. И дайте так, да, маленький ботилишку уборочки, да. Интересно, что у вас есть современный калькулятор, есть, но все есть. равно вы предпочитаете использовать да. это. Да. Интересно. Внутри водка. Да ладно. Это не, это шутка. Не-не, правда, шутка. попробуй. Правда. Eager's saying that in this shop they sell cakes with vodka inside. Давайте. Честно, водка есть там? Честно. That's how much they love vodka in Ukraine, that even their cakes have vodka. I can't wait to try my vodka cake. It, oh, wow, it's a democracy. It's a vodka. It's leaking vodka. It's all wet. I can feel it inside the bag. It's just the vodka's leaking out. I told you 50% is vodka. 50% of this cake is vodka. Wow, new idea, Igor. We're going to make an export business. We should export these cakes, vodka cakes, to England. I think they'll be popular. Chernobyl vodka. Chernobyl vodka cake. Yeah. We've just stopped at one of the many checkpoints here in um, the, re the zone. Always keeping tabs on you. The gate has been opened and we're allowed in to the village of resettlers down here in the zone. I suppose every time that Igor comes and knocks on a door in a village, these people are very old and there's no answer. He probably wonders, you know, is everything okay? People are just dying off. The resettlers who came, there were eight resettlers in this village before, now there's only two. This guy's in his 80s, so it's only a matter of time before the village is depopulated once again. 
poor guy was having a Sunday snooze, a Sunday lie-in, and we've turned up. I'm sorry, Ivan Ivanovich was explaining that, like, for his family members to visit him, like his son, he has a son, but it's very difficult because you can only have five day permission to come here, then you have to leave. Then you have to go back to your own town, make permission, it's expensive, and his son lives far away, and his son's not a rich man, and so he's lonely here because people can't visit him so easily. Um, so Ivan Ivanovich is explaining that um, he was catching fish in the river here, which is not allowed because the fish are contaminated. And him and his friend were eating the fish. And then the people from the administration came and checked their health. And his friend was found to have over the legal limits of radiation. And so the friend snitched on Ivan Ivanovich and said Ivan Ivanovich was catching fish. We ate it together. And so he had a problem. He was in a little bit of trouble with the administration because he was breaking the rules of the zone. No? But when, when uh, they checked him, yep. he was clean. Yes, but Ivan Ivanovich is somehow immune to the radiation. Maybe that's why he's got the t-shirt on and enjoy Chernobyl. <laughs> ну давайте, потому что я прочитал, что если водка выпью, это не будет мешает ваш тело. То, что вы будете здоровы еще дольше. Совсем здоровье ваше. Спасибо, что вы приехали. Варить, так варить, а не варить, не варить. Я хочу посмотреть ваш красивый город, который был припят. Я хочу смотреть. А а что надо, там еще? Надо, да, надо. да, да, да. Я пока не бил. Там нема ничего хорошего, а что ты сделаешь? <laughs> О, и вот такая у меня жизнь получилась. Разбита, конечно, ну что ты сделаешь? This lonely little house that he built in the 19, 1960s, still living here by himself. Bye-bye, Ivan Ivanovich. Wow, bloody hell. Tastes just like vodka. Vodka cake in Chernobyl. Wow. We've stopped on the road not far from the reactor because I want to show you something. This is the infamous Red Forest as it's called or in Ukraine it's called Rudilis and this is the most contaminated place in the world in terms of radiation. When the explosion happened at the, re at the, um, at the reactor it drifted in this direction and a lot of it was dumped here, a lot of the debris from the roof and a lot of the, a lot of the stuff came down here, the isotopes and landed here in this forest. And then overnight, the forest, the trees, the leaves, everything turned to a bright color of red. And Igor here has a picture of this, of the red forest. So this was the greenery here on the right. And then you can see here how everything just overnight was turned red. And this is it. Now, okay, that stuff is dyed and new stuff is regenerated. But um, yeah, the most contaminated place on earth, the red forest. This building here that you see under the sarcophagus, this is it, the source of the crime. This is reactor number four. It's now been buried, as I say, under this huge building that cost billions of dollars to build. The plan to be to keep the radiation in, but this is it. This is the source of all the problems, the source of so many deaths, so much radiation, so many contaminated lands in Ukraine, in Belarus, and Russia. The reasons why people like Kolya live alone in a village far from anyone. 
It all started here, reactor number four. Fifty thousand people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town.